Hey guys, what is up? Let's talk about getting over someone. I know people oftentimes will really struggle with moving on after a breakup or a divorce, and I wanna give you really three concepts that a lot of people don't talk about. These are gonna really be the things that are gonna help you to actually move on from this either heartbreak, divorce, or breakup. So often in videos and podcasts, people will just say the typical things. You deserved better, they weren't worth it, you'll move on, like don't worry. But when you're going through like like some knee deep hard stuff and your heart is absolutely breaking, that stuff doesn't really help us. So I wanna talk about these three concepts so you guys can start to understand that we can start implementing them. That way it will really help you to actually move yourself forward. So I want you to understand this first concept getting over someone is not emotional it's logical now i know that may sound a little ridiculous because stuff our relationships are emotional how is this not an emotional thing i totally understand but the relationship was emotional you moving on and letting go and getting over this person is not an emotional thing it's a logical thing what i mean by that is you can't just stop loving someone but you can decide that you're no longer going to be with someone or you can decide that you're no longer going to obsessively think about someone. The problem is a lot of times when we're getting over someone, we want to go from zero to 60. It doesn't really work like that. Letting go, forgiveness, these are all practices. These are things that you do and like over time they start to stack up where you actually start to like move away from someone. So if, you, we, if we understand that we can't actually just shut love off, and that getting over someone is actually just a logical decision that we're making, a conscious decision that we're making to move ourselves forward, that's healthy. When we cannot really get over someone, it's really because we're living too much in the past. We're living too much in the what ifs. We haven't fully accepted what has happened because we also haven't fully accepted how we feel about it. If all of your energy is tied up in the past, in all the what ifs, in all of the relationship was so great and just kind of like reminiscing about all the good stuff and we don't ever really remind ourselves of what the realities are, then we're using that energy in this like past experience and we're not really using it in the present. If we're struggling to really get over someone, the truth of the matter is, is that you're kind of like sitting in the past in this relationship and all the what ifs, and you're not really using that energy for good to help move yourself forward or to actually just stay present with where you are in life right now. Now here's where the logical begins to come into play. At some point, you have to make a conscious decision on where you want to go. Do you want to stay stuck in the past or do you want to move yourself forward? Now, this is not a black or white thing because there's grieving and there is mourning and there is accepting and there is forgiving that has to be done in that past relationship. So we can dip in the past and we can work on ourselves regarding that relationship, but it has to be good stuff that actually is helping you to build some blocks to then move yourself forward. If we're not really doing any of that work, then we're just kind of like idealizing this relationship and sitting in all of the what ifs as if this relationship was going to be something that it wasn't probably meant to be. Actually, it wasn't meant to be because if it was, you would still be with this person. Now, the next kind of concept that I want you to understand, you have to start overriding your emotions. So when I say that this is a logical thing and not an emotional thing, you are so used to running off of your emotions that you have to gain a little bit more self-control of your emotional state. You see, when we're hurt or we lose something, it is inevitable that our ego is bruised and that we feel this sense of pain because we lost something. We lost something that we wanted to have. So I have this projection or this fantasy or this expectation on the way this was supposed to go. And because you're not behaving or you did not behave in the way that I thought you would, or this relationship didn't pan out in the way that I thought it would have, then I feel disappointment. And of course we have to deal with that disappointment and we have to learn how to grieve and manage it, but we also can't live in it. And when we live in it, that means that we're allowing these emotional states that we have to control us. One of the most beneficial and honestly game-changing things that I learned was when I understood that my emotions really just came from the stories that I was telling myself. So basically the thoughts that I was thinking and the thoughts that I were unknowingly feeding, whether they were good or bad, 
were dictating how I felt. So for you, the story might sound something like, this was the love of my life. This person was so perfect. This person was my soulmate. I thought we were gonna be together forever. The story could also be that this was never supposed to end. Now here's the thing. The truth is, is that no one signs up to get into a relationship to then break up, to have the relationship end at some point. But we also don't have control over the way that life goes, the way that people change, the way that you change. And being in a relationship makes you extremely vulnerable, then we have to accept that relationships can dissolve. So the reason why you're really struggling to get over this person and the reason why you're obsessing about all of this is because of the stories that you're telling yourself. Now the stories could be about this person or it could actually be about yourself. Why didn't this person change? Why didn't they love me? Why didn't they pick me? And then that, those stories begin to actually just dwindle down your self-esteem. So either way, your stories are either going to hurt you and how you view yourself, or they're going to keep you stuck in this fantasy of what you thought the relationship was when that actually isn't really the case. The problem too that I think most people have is they fill these stories with such happy memories and happy times. There's these huge expectations and projections that you will put on a relationship when it is ending because we're basically going through change and no one likes change. And when life does something that takes someone out of your life, we go through this like detachment period and the detachment period, which is really where like the grieving and the sadness and the uncomfortableness starts to come into play. of like, okay, I'm sleeping alone. Okay, I'm moving out. Okay, I'm living by myself again. When we go through this detachment, it's painful. It's not something that's comfortable, but in that detachment, if you remind yourself of what the real stories are, and managing your uncomfortableness while you're going through this period of kind of like getting back to you, then you will be fine and then you will move on and you'll actually heal and learn some lessons and heal and get better. Where most people really struggle is they feel this uncomfortableness and they don't like it and they'll either start to fill things in their life to kind of like avoid that unsettled feeling, that anxious feeling that they're experiencing having now be being in these uncomfortable stages of life basically or they're going to just stay in this like real sadness that what they lost was so horrific when and i'm not talking about death i'm talking about a breakup i'm talking about a divorce where they're going through like such painful grief because they're not really living in a reality state. They're living in this fantasy state. Most people don't fill their stories with the truth. Okay, well, what's the truth? The truth is, is that you need to look at how this person made you feel. Did this person make you feel safe? Did this person make you feel heard? Did this person change? Did you change? How were your standards in this relationship? Were they high or quite frankly, were you settling? What do you actually want in a relationship? What does a good relationship look like to you? Is this person capable of being that person for you? Most people don't really focus on, did you actually even like this person? Did you like everything that made them who they are? Did you respect them? Did they respect you? When you start to kind of like answer these questions, you start to get to more of the truth. And then you realize that a lot of times it's not even this person, it's just the mourning and grieving of the relationship in general. And it has nothing to actually do with this person. Now, if you're not asking yourself those truthful reality questions, then what you're doing is you're mourning a character and you're gonna stay stuck in these cycles where you're never really gonna get over this person or it's going to be a real struggle for you to get over this person. The last concept that I wanna introduce you to with this is the most powerful. Moving on is an act and a decision. It is a decision that you make for yourself to say, I don't want to be stuck here anymore. I deserve to move on. I deserve to find someone else. I deserve to have a great life. Moving on is about taking action towards your life and filling it up. These are steps that you take to really rebuild yourself. This is not about how you emotionally feel because our emotions oftentimes don't make sense. <laughs> emotions, again, are not logical. So if we're coming from more of a logical state, then we're going to make decisions that are going to be beneficial to us in the long run. And that's really what you're trying to do. You're trying to make conscious decisions to move yourself forward, conscious decisions to say, okay, I am not going to obsess about this person anymore. For a lot of people, they don't really understand that they actually have free will to be able to decide to stop thinking about this person. So when I talk about self-parenting on this channel, when I talk a lot about mental health and, and all of these concepts, the, the game changer is that you have free will. The game changer is that you have the ability to say, no, I'm not gonna have any more chocolate cake. 
You actually have that. There has to be a part of you that you learn to kind of hone in on that really can take control and take charge of the situation. So it's just like being a parent to a child or a babysitting a child. You're not going to let the child do whatever it wants to do in every single moment because the child is very emotional. It's not logical. It doesn't really have a lot of logic. You can't talk to a three-year-old about how the fact that there is no apples in the house and that we can just go to the grocery store in five minutes. Instead, what you see the three-year-old do is scream and cry and throw a tantrum and freak out because they want the apple right now. So your emotional, your emotional state and the reason why you feel the way you do all has to do with the simple fact that you let your child do whatever he or she wants to do. If she wants to just obsess and look on social media and ruminate and think about and fantasize about this relationship and how it was going to be everything in the world and how you're so disappointed now because of it, then you're going to stay stuck. Now, of course, we have emotions and we have to be able to deal with our emotions. And I talk a lot about emotional health in my self-parenting course. I'll link it down below if you're interested in looking into that. Because emotional health is a really key factor that most people completely overlook. And it's something we're 100% not taught how to do for ourselves. But because you have to deal with your emotions, but you can't live in your emotions. And that's the problem that you're facing right now. And that's why you're staying stuck. So I hope this video has helped you. I hope it gave you some great tidbits. If it did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I will link everything down below in terms of my private coaching. If you're looking to work with me or take one of my courses, I'm also on social down below as well. And don't forget to click subscribe if you are not a member of this community and I will see you next week.